हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज डॉक्टर विशाल त्रिवेदी फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बायोसाइंस एंड बायो इंजीनियरिंग आई गुवाहाटी एंड दिस पर्टिकुलर मॉड्यूल वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द डी एन एप्लीकेशन सो सो फॉर वाट वी हैव डिस्कस वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट द डी एन एप्लीकेशन इन प्रो कैरियोर्स एंड वाइल वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द डी एन एप्लीकेशन इन प्रो कैरियोर्स वी डिस्कस अबाउट हाउ द इनिशिएशन कॉम्प्लेक्स इज गोइंग टू बी फॉर्म्ड एंड हाउ द the different types of components are required for the dna application in prokaryotes and how the dna application in prokaryote is different and required the special machinery for its dna synthesis now in today's lecture we are going to discuss the about the eukaryotic applications because eukaryotic application is different from the prokaryotic application in terms of the uh, components or the enzymes what is required and the property of these enzymes are very very different so uh, as an as a name suggests the dna replication is the mechanism by which the cell duplicates its genetic material ensuring that the each newly formed cell receive an accurate copy of the original dna so this kind of objective is also been uh, met even when we are doing the dna replication in the eukaryote as well the process is essential for the growth development and transmission of genetic information from the one generation to the next generation and the dna replication involves the various enzymes and protein working together to unwind and separate the double stranded dna molecule synthesize the new complementary stro uh, in strand and ensure the fidelity of the copied genetic material the basic principle of unitic eukaryotic and uh, prokaryotic dna replication are the same however there are some notable differences now the one important point is that the eukaryotic replication is much more complicated than the eukaryotic replications and there are many reason why it is so actually so why the eukaryotic replication is more complex than the prokaryotic replication because of the simple reason that the eukaryotic genomes are quite complex they are larger than the bacterial dna right remember that the bacterial dnas are very small even in the plasmid dna also and it is a having a complex structure because remember that the bacterial chromosome or bacterial genomic content is not been associated with the protein molecules and it is not that much complex compared to that the eukaryotic system remember that when we were discussing about the eukaryotic genome we discussed that how it is actually been associated with the histone proteins and how the histone octamers are forming the nucleosomes and then nucleosomes are further Uh, you know uh, uh, further uh, assembled and give you the chromosomes so the chromosome is mostly been uh, present in the eukaryotic structures uh, but apart from these differences or the complexity the replication process in the both the prokaryotic and the eukaryotic uh, system actually involves some of the basic uh, steps for example the formation of the replication fork is common between them primer synthesis is also common between them once the primer job is over and it has to be removed by the dna ball one in the prokaryotic system that is also common then you also going to have the okazaki fragment whether it is the prokaryotic system or the eukaryotic system then the replication mode it is going to be semi conservative whether it is a eukaryotic or the prokaryotic system and the moment of the replication fork would be bidirectional uh, in the both the prokaryotic as well as the eukaryotic system so replication fork is going to be bidirectional in the case of uh, prokaryotic or the eukaryotic system and it is also been uh, required for gap bridging between the newly synthesized dna fragments uh, with the help of the dna pol1 and the dna ligase so apart from these kind of similarity there are significant difference in terms of the uh, uh, the machinery and uh, other kinds of uh, proper uh, requirements so apart from these similarities there are significant difference between the prokaryotic and the eukaryotic replications we have discussed many of these differences so but i thought i should remind you so that it will be easy for you to follow up the eukaryotic uh, replications so what is the difference the important differences between the prokaryotic and the eukaryotic replications eukaryotic dna is larger than the prokaryotic dna that is a very very important difference because the uh, the purpose of the replication is to uh, you know to, to duplicate the dna and if the uh, the dna amount is large 
then it will actually going to be required the different machinery. The movement of fork is slower in eukaryote than the prokaryote because the nucleotide have to disassemble so that the DNA becomes available to the DNA polymerase. So, uh, this means the eukaryotic replication is going to be slower, it is going to take longer period of time to complete and that is why you remember that the uh, life cycle of the eukaryotic cells are much more uh, you know uh, much more than the uh, prokaryotic system. For example, the E. coli, E. coli completes its life cycle or completes its duplication in the 18 minutes right. Compared to that uh, a simple uh, E. coli a simple uh, mammalian cells for example, the HEK293 completes its duplication somewhere around 16 to 17 hours. So, it, that is because of the simple reason that the DNA replication is very very slow in the case of mammalian system compared to the bacterial system. So, here everything is getting over by in 18 minutes whereas, here that same thing required the 16 to 17 hours. Then it has a distinct packaging of the eukaryotic DNA in terms of the chromatins. So, chromatin structure is very very uh, higher order organizations in the case of the uh, eukaryotic system whereas, it is not in the case of eukaryotic system. Uh, now, let us take an example like what is the replication rate. So, replication rate in the case of prokaryote is approximately 1000 base pair per second whereas, the replication rate is 10 times slower than the prokaryote. So, it is only the 50 nucleotides per second. So, it is very very small and it is a small because of the simple reason that uh, the nucleotide ha have to disassemble before the DNA become available to the DNA polymerase. And apart from that uh, in the prokaryotic system you do not have the uh, chromatin structure. So, the chromatin structure has to you know disassemble the DNA has to be free from the chromatin structures and so on. So, uh, before getting into the detail of the different processes of the DNA replication in the eukaryotes let us first understand the machinery about the DNA replications. So, there are different types of polymerases because these are the important uh, uh, component of the replications. So, you have the 5 different types of DNA polymerases like uh, alpha, beta, gamma, delta and the epsilon ok. And uh, the localization uh, most of the uh, uh, DNA polymerases are present in the nucleus except that the DNA pol gamma is present into the mitochondria. Then the what is the biological function? The biological function of the alpha is the replication initiation, beta is uh, involved in the DNA repair, then the gamma is uh, involved into the mitochondrial DNA replications, then the delta and the epsilon is required for the replication of the lagging as well as the leading strands. Then you require the number of subunits. So, as far as the structure is concerned, uh, alpha is half uh, tetramer. Uh, beta is monomer uh, and gamma is the homotetramer and the delta is dimer and the, uh, the epsilon is not known. Then 3 prime exonucleus activity, 3 prime exonucleus activity is absent in most uh, in the alpha and beta, but it is present in the gamma, delta and epsilon. Then primase binding, so primase binding is present in the case of alpha, but it is absent in the all other DNA polymerases. Then you require the molecular weight of catalytic site. So, it is going to be 160 to 185 and so on. Then you require the KM, uh, KM for the DNTPs. So, KM for DNTP is in the range of 2 to 5, 10 and 0.5 and 2 to 4. So, if you cannot uh, be able to understand what is KM, uh, uh, you should you know be able to understand this by uh, I think we have discussed very briefly in one of the lectures where we were talking about the enzymes. So, we have discussed about the KM and uh, so KM is the Michaelis momentum constant and it actually indirectly says what will be the affinity of the enzyme for, for the DNTPs right. Uh, sensitivity to arabinol CTP, so it is going to be very high in the case of the alpha and uh, delta, but it is going to be low in the case of beta and gamma and sensitivity to Fe2 codeline. So, it is going to be high in the case of alpha and the delta where and the epsilon as well, but it is going to be low in the case of the beta and gamma right. Now, let us 
talk about the uh, some of these DNA polymerases. So, we will start with the alpha. So, DNA polymerase alpha, DNA polymerase alpha is localized into the nucleus and it, uh, it is a tetramer, right. So, it is going to have the four subunits, you are going to have the pol A1, pol A1 regulatory, pol A3 uh, primase activity and pol A4 it is a primase activity. So, for all the four subunits are different, right. So, A1 is going to have the catalytic activity, A2 is going to have the regulatory activity and A3 is going to have the primase activity and A4 is also going to have the primase activity. Now, that means you are going to have the pol alpha and uh, pol primase activity together, right. This means it is actually going to synthesize the primer and as well as it is going to sit on to utilize that primer for, uh, for the DNA applications. So, initiation of the replication on both the leading and lagging strand synthesis is the function of the DNA polymerase alpha. Then we have the DNA polymerase delta. So, DNA polymerase delta is localized into the nucleus, it catalyzes the synthesis of the lagging strands. It has the high processivity when interacting with the PCNA or PCNA or the proliferating cell nuclear antigen. PCNA is a important factor what is been having a very critical role in the DNA damage and repair as well. And it is also associated with the helicase activity and it improves fidelity or replication by a factor of 10 to power 2 due to its proofreading actions. It has a 4 subunit, uh, it has 1, 2 and 3 and 4. So, large subunit catalyzes the 5 prime to 3 prime catalytics activity whereas, small subunit catalyzes the 3 to 5 prime uh, exonucleus activity or the proofreading activity. Then we have the DNA polymerase uh, epsilon, right. So, it is localized into the nucleus, DNA pol epsilon catalyzes the repair mechanism, it also catalyzes the removal of primer and filling the primer gap in the Okazaki fragment. So, it is uh, very much close to what the function what uh, you have seen in the case of prokaryotic system as DNA pol 1. So, it is actually going to have the same kind of role that it is going to remove the primers and it is also going to fill the gap in the uh, between the Okazaki fragments. It is going to have the 4 subunit, you are going to have 1, 2, 3 and 4 and uh, 5 prime to 3 prime polymerase activity, uh, 5 prime to 3 prime exonucleus activity and 3 prime to 5 prime exonucleus activity is present in the DNA polymerase alpha epsilon and it is required for the uh, different types of activities. For example, 3 to 5 prime to 3 prime exonucleus activity is required to remove the RNA primer, whereas 3 to 5 to 5 prime exonucleus activity is required for the proofreading. Uh, now, what is the replication factor RFA or replication factor protein RFA? So, it plays a significant role in stabilizing the single standard DNA region that are exposed during the rep DNA replication and repair mechanism. RPA prevent this single standard region from forming the secondary structure and protect them from the degradation allowing the other enzyme and factor to perform their function accurately. So, RPA is actually going to do the same job what you have understood in the case of SSP actually into the in the prokaryotic system. And then we have the uh, PCNA. PCNA is important for the DNA synthesis and the repair and uh, we are going to do discuss in detail about its role into the DNA repair when we are just going to discuss about the DNA repair mechanisms. The molecular weight of the uh, molecule is 35,000 kilo Dalton. It is a multimeric protein and it is found into the large amount to the nuclei of the proliferating cells. And what is the function? So, PCNA act as a clamp to keep the DNA pol theta uh, delta from dissociating off from the leading strand and PCNA help both hold the DNA polymerase epsilon to the DNA. Uh, replication factor C or RFC also known as uh, clamp holder or to the matchmaker. So, uh, this is the PCNA which is going to be a clamp and then it is going to be a RFC. So, it is going to make a complex with each other. So, binding of PCNA and RFC is going to make a complex and this complex is going to have the uh, affinity for the uh, for the DNA, DNA right. 
so binding and hydrolysis of atp once this is formed it is actually going to bind the atp and it's going to hydrolyze the atp and that actually is going to bring the structural changes into the pcna and uh, clamp holder rfc and once it there will be a structural changes into the rfc it is actually going to have the affinity for the dna and that's how it will go and bind to the dna and then uh, that actually is going to load the pcna onto the dna and once it binds to the dna then it is actually going to form a complex with the pol uh, pol theta and hydro there will be hydrolysis of the atp and the dna polymerase delta is going to be recruited onto the dna uh, on the dna and that's how it is actually going to help in the initiation stage of the uh, dna uh, applications now, one of the important uh, aspect of the DNA replication in the eukaryotes is that it is actually the DNA is not freely available, right? Compared to the prokaryotes, where the DNA is freely available and it's only required to, you know, locate the origin of replication and then all the machinery is going to assemble onto the original replications and then it is actually going to start the synthesis. Compared to that, here first you have to bring the free double standard structure and then you are actually going to unwind the DNA and then you are actually going to do all that what you have discussed in the prokaryotic system. So, the first thing is you have to dismantle the chromatins so that the chromatin should be uh, available for, uh, for the, the, so that the free DNA is available for all these kind of activity. So, histone dissociation and then associations and all these events has to be reversed once your replication is done otherwise this free DNA which is not covered with the protein would be vulnerable for the different types of DNAs and other kinds of enzyme what is present inside the nucleus. So, DNA replication is sandwiched between the two additional steps in the eukaryotes dissociation of the histones and the synthesis of histone. So, methylation at the fifth position of cysteine residue by the DNA methyl transferase appear to be functioned by loosening up the chromatin structures. This allows the DNA access to the protein and enzyme needed for the DNA applications. Remember that the DNA and the histones are attached with each other by a positive negative interaction. So, it because of this electrostatic interactions. So, when the, the uh, histones, uh, once the uh, cytosine in the DNA is going to be methylated by the transferases, it is actually going to bring or it is going to loosen the interaction between the histone and the chromatin structures and that is how it is going to allow the DNA access to the protein and enzyme needed for the DNA applications. Then it uh, occurs simultaneously with the DNA, so synthesis of the histone it occurs simultaneously with the DNA applications. So, these are the sequential steps into the DNA replications you are going to have the first step is the formation of the B initiation complex. The second step is the initiation, the third step is the elongation, the fourth step is the termination and the fifth step is the telomerase function. So, that you can actually be able to have the completion of the telomeric regions. So, the first start with the pre initiation, the pre initiation, the pre initiation step is the crucial step that prepare the DNA for the actual replication process. These steps primar primarily occur at the origin of replication which are a specific DNA sequence where the replication begins. The process of identifying these sequences is known as the replication replicator selections which occurs into the G1 phase. This process leads to the assembly of multi protein complexes at each replicator in the genome and the origin uh, activator only occurs after the cell enter into the S phase and trigger the replica replicator associated protein complex to initiate the DNA unwinding and the DNA polymerase recruitments. So, pre initiation complex uh, is come is a is a is being formed onto the origin of applications right. So, uh, the combination of the ORC MCM2 to 7 and CD66 and CDT1 along with the other regulatory protein factors form the pre initiation complex at the origin. This complex serves as a platform for the initiation of the replication. So, imagine that if this is the origin of replications, then the ORG will go and bind, and once the ORG will go and ORC will go and bind, 
then the CDC 6 and CDT 11 is actually going to bind to this particular ORC and uh, once these are going to bind then you are going to have the binding of the MCM 2 to 7 and uh, these are the once these are going to bind it is actually going to make the pre initiation complex and these pre initiation complex job of the pre initiation complex is that it should allow the recruitment of the DNA polymerase so that it will actually going to start the DNA synthesis. So, these are the some of the crucial step into the pre initiation complex formation. Now, you are going to have the initiation. So, it involves the coordinated action of various protein complexes and enzyme to ensure the accurate and faithful duplication of genetic material. This process ensures that the each daughter cell receives a complete copy of the genome during cell divisions. So, you are going to have the uh, autonomous replicating sequences or the ARS or the replicators. Okay? For example, each contains approximately 400 automatic replicating sequences. So, these uh, automatic replicated sequences are the independent sequences, they are actually going to have their own origin of replication. So, they can be able to rep, you know start the uh, replications and remember that in the case uh, compared to the prokaryotic system in the eukaryotic system you are going to have the multiple origin of replications that is how you are actually going to be complete the duplication of the genomic DNA uh, at multiple points. So, you are you are it is not like the DNA replication will start from one end of the DNA and then it is going to over uh, start from there and then it is going to finish by the end of the DNA. No, it is not like that. In the case of eukaryotic system, the DNA replication is going to be start at multiple points and that be, you know because the replication rate is very slow compared to the prokaryotic system. So, it is actually require the multiple points at which the DNA replication is going to start. The second point is because the DNA size is very big it needs the multiple machinery to replicate the things. So, a specific site for the initiation of DNA replication is the ATD sequences which is highly conserved 11 base pair sequences, then you also have the flanking sequences and then you also require the 100 to 150 base pair long the uh, 3 prime end sequences. So, mainly the AT rich sequences are actually the original replications the sequences or the site where the uh, pre initiation complex is going to assemble and then the initiation is going to start. The multiple origin of replications are spaced from the 300 to 300 kb apart which means for example, if you have a DNA right then you are going to have the multiple origin of replications. So, all these more original replications would be somewhere around 300 kb which means from this particular origin of replication one fork will run in this direction and another fork will run in this direction and that is how it is actually going to complete the replication or the duplication of this amount of DNA. So, for example, if it happens up to this, so it this is at this from this origin of replication it is only going to give you a DNA until this. But then you are going to have another rep origin of replication that also is going to run in this direction and this direction and that also going to synthesize this amount of DNA. So, in a same amount of time this origin of replication will give you the DNA number 1, this will go actually going to give you DNA number 2 and this again this will going to give you the DNA number 3 and so on and that is how these all are actually going to assembled later on and it will give you the complete synthesis of this particular whole stretch. So, that is what the adaptation or uh, that is what the uh, SD is what going to be adopted by the eukaryotic system because the eukaryotic genomes are very very large compared to the bacterial genome. The sequence between the two original replication is known as the replicons right. So, this is actually a replicon this is the one replicon which is actually going to uh, be uh, you know participate into the replications this is another replicon, this is another replicon. So, these are the multiple replicons what are going to be formed into the eukaryotic system. The AT rich uh, also known as the ARS or the automatic uh, replicating sequences similar to uh, is similar to AT rich 13 more present in the E. coli OEC. Uh, it is also called as the ORE or the origin replicating elements. The flanking sequences consist of the overlapping sequences that include the variant of the core sequences. 
so ore or the orc so ore is called as origin rep uh, origin replicating elements and orc is called as origin recognition complexes so ore which is a 111 base pair sequence in the core sequence bind to a set of proteins for example dna pol alpha helicases dna pol delta rfc pcna ssb rfa and that all are going to assemble on to the origin recognition complexes and all these are going to make the origin recognition complexes which is a multimeric proteins and initiation of the replication in all eukaryotic required this multimeric protein which binds to the uh, several sequences. So, uh, ORE located adjacent to the approximately 80 base pair 80 rich sequence that is very easy to unwind. The binding of ORC to ORE causes the unwinding at the DU that is the DNA unwinding elements. Now, events in the uh, rep replication fork, the DNA synthesis is initiated by the ORC and ORE. The replication fork moves bi bidirectionally and replication proceeds simultaneously as many as, as 200 forks, which means you are going to have the 200 origin of replications or uh, replicons simultaneously uh, for, uh, working at together. right? Uh, then the formation of the replication fox. The replication fox in the eukaryote consists of four components that forms uh, that forms in the following sequences. Sequence number one: the DNA helicase and DNA pol alpha unwind the short segment of the parental DNA at 80 base pair 80 rich sequences called the DU or the DNA unwinding elements. Then the P DNA pol alpha initiate the synthesis of the RNA primer which is going to be a 10 base pair RNA primers. Then the daughter strand synthesis is initiated by the DNA pol epsilon and the DNA pol delta in the leading strand respectively. So, this DNA pol epsilon and DNA pol theta is going to uh, have the initiation of the DNA in the leading strands. SSB and RFA binds to the single standard DNA and prevents its reannealing. Uh, so, DNA pol epsilon and DNA pol delta is going to have the uh, initiation strand is in DNA synthesis going to initiate into the leading as well as the lagging strands. Then the two additional factors which play important role into the replication of eukaryotes are the PCNA and the RFC. Right. So, PCNA is actually going to be proliferating cell nu and, and nuclear antigens and it act as a clamp to keep the DNA pol delta to keep, disso to keep dissociating of the leading strand and thus increasing the processivity of DNA pol epsilon. Whereas, the RFC is going to work as a clamp loader or matchmaker and its function is that it assists the DNA pol delta to form the clamp between the DNA and the PCNA and it helps in setting up a link between the DNA pol delta and DNA pol epsilon so that the leading and leading strand synthesis can take place simultaneously. So, this is the one of the examples where uh, the, the fork is running in the both directions right and uh, the this is the situation in the uh, how the replication fork is going to be formed. And, uh, so, the replication uh, initiation complex is going to be assembled on both the side right. What you see here is uh, one side one fork is one uh, uh, initiation complex is going to be assembled on this side and another pre initiation complex is going to assemble on this side and that is how it is actually keep uh, you know removing uh, the association of the DNA from the nucleosome and that is how the uh, this will run in this direction and this will run in this direction. Uh, rate of the replication fork movement. So, the rate of the replication fork movement in eukaryote is approximately 50 nucleotide per second which is only one tenth of the E. coli replication rate. Replication of human chromosome proceeds bidirectionally from the multiple origin spaced 300 to 30 to 300 kb base pair up, uh, apart and completed within an hour. An average chromosome contain nearly 100 replicons between uh, and thus the replication proceeds simultaneously as many as at 200 replicons. So, this is all about the pre-initiation complex and the initiation. Once the initiation is done then it is actually going to enter into the next phase and that is called as the elongation. So, elongation. Uh, 
During elongation, an enzyme called DNA polymerase adds the DNA nucleotide to the C prime end of the newly synthesized polynucleotide strands. The template stand specify which of the four nucleotide that is ATGC is going to be added at the position along the new chain. So, you know, you know that the wherever you in the template if the template has A then it is actually going to add the T if the template has G then it is actually going to add the C. So, it is always going to follow the Watson Crick base pairing in, uh, rule and that is how it is actually going to add. Uh, only the nucleotide complementary to the template nucleotide at the position is added to the new strands. For example, when the DNA polymerase meet an adenosine nucleotide onto the template strand, it adds the thymine to the C prime end of the newly synthesized strand and then move to the next nucleotide on the template strand. The above process will continue until the DNA polymerase reaches add to the end of the template strands. So, these are the some of the events what is going to happen in the elongation into the eukaryotic DNA replications. You are going to have the assembly of the uh, DNA pol uh, th delta and the epsilon onto the leading and the lagging strands and that is how you are going to have the synthesis of the leading and the lagging strands. So, you are going to have the recruitment of the polymerase and primases onto the both strands right. So, this is going to be leading strand, this is going to be lagging strand and uh, then this clamp is actually going to keep sliding into this direction and that is how it is actually going to be keep unwinding the DNA and uh, same is true for this one also right. And in this one uh, the you are going to have the synthesis of the lagging strands uh, on this side you are going to have the synthesis of lagging strand whereas on this side you are going to have the synthesis of leading strands. Now, for one of the important uh, component of this whole reaction is the synthesis of the primer and that is being done by the enzyme which is called as primase. So, primase all newly synthesized nucleotide strand must be initiated by the specialized RNA polymerase called as a primase. It initiate the polynucleotide synthesis by creating a short uh, RNA nucleotide strand complementary to the template DNA strands. The short set of RNA nucleotide is known as the primers. Once the RNA has been extended at the template strand, the primer exists and the DNA polymerase extend the new strand with the, the nucleotide complementary to the template strand. RNA nucleotide in the primers are removed by the DNA nucleotide by the help of the uh, DNA polymerase. Once the DNA replication is finished, the daughter molecules are made entire, entirely of continuous DNA strand with no RNA portions. The leading and the lagging strands, the DNA strand polymerase can only synthesize new strand in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction so that the two newly synthesized strand grow in the opposite direction because of the template strand at the each replication force are anti -cellar. leading strand. It is synthesized continuously toward the replication fork as helicase unwind the template un double standard DNA. Whereas, for the lagging strand, it is synthesized in the direction away from the replication fork and away from the DNA helicase unwind. It synthesis the, this strand is synthesized in pieces known as the Okazaki fragment and each fragment begins its own RNA primer. This all we have discussed when we were discussing about the prokaryotic system. Then we have the leading strand synthesis. So, in the leading strand synthesis you are going to have it is initiated upon the RNA primer synthesis by the primase unit of the DNA pol alpha. Then the DNA pol alpha adds a stretch of DNA to the primers. At this point the RFC carried out a process known as the polymerase switching and RFC removed DNA pol alpha and assemble the PCNA in the region of the primer strand terminus. Then the DNA pol epsilon binds to the PSNA and carried out the leading strand synthesis due to the 5 prime, 3 prime new polymerase activity. After the addition of several nucleotide in the dotal strand is removed by the uh, DNA pol epsilon due to its 3 to 5 exonuclease activity and gap is also filled by the same polymerase again. Then the NIC is sealed by the DNA ligase and uh, finally the fidelity of the replication is uh, removed by the DNA pol delta. Uh, due to its proofreading activity. Then we have the lagging strand synthesis. So, lagging strand synthesis of the Okazaki fragments initiated same way as the leading strand synthesis. RNA primary is synthesized by DNA pol alpha due to its primase activity. 
the primer is then extended by the DNA pol delta due to its 5 prime to 3 prime polymerase activity using the DNTPs. All but one of the ribonucleotide in RNA primers is removed by the RNAs H1. This then the exonucleus activity of FEN and the RTH1 complex uh, removes the one remaining nucleotide. The gap is filled by the DNA epsilon by the 5 prime to 3 prime activity and the DNA ligase join the occasic fragment of the growing DNA strands. So, this is all what you are going to show the lagging strand synthesis and as well as so in the lagging strand synthesis you are going to have the synthesis of the RNA, you are going to have the synthesis of unwinding the DNA and so on. Combined activity of DNA pol delta and DNA pol epsilon. So, looping of the lagging strand allow a combined uh, polymer, DNA polymerase delta and DNA polymerase epsilon asymmetric dimer to assemble and elongate both leading and lagging strand in the same overall direction of the fork movement. And then the last portion or the last step is the terminations. So, when the replication fork meet each other then the termination occur. It will result in the formation of the two duplex DNA. Even though the replication is terminated, 5 prime end of the telomeric part of the new silicized DNA molecule found to have shorter DNA strand than the template strand. This shortage is corrected by the action of an enzyme. The only actual uh, replication is completed, the enzyme is called as the telomerases. So, when the replication is happening right, it is going to start from the center and uh, one of the folk will go in this direction, the other folk will go in this direction and that is how when they will meet with each other or they will meet the folk of the other, the, 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 the replication is going to stop. But at these corners, the, these corners right, what will happen is that the synthesis is not going to be complete because the last primer what you are going to use is go not going to allow the synthesis of the last portion of the DNA and these portion are actually going to be synthesized by an enzyme which is called as telomerase. And once the tel until the telomerase does not come and synthesize the telomers, it is very difficult to say that the DNA replication is complete because if that does not happen then this portion is going to be lost and if it is keep lossing then there will be a shortening of the genomic DNA. Telomerases. Telomerases are the enzyme which actually synthesize the telomers or which actually are going to synth uh, complete the synthesis of the telomers. So, dur during eukaryotic replications, telomerase play a crucial role in ensuring the accurate replication of the linear chromosome. Eukaryotic cell uses a semi-conservant application to replicate this DNA and this process poses a challenge at the end of the linear chromosome. Teleomerases serve to overcome this challenge and maintain the integrity of the genetic information. So, so, at the corner of the chromosome, the, these corners are not going to be replicated because there will be a, uh, because it is going to be a problem, right. So, a, a short stretch of the 5 to 8 base pair and the tandem repeats are and the GCDH nucleotide sequences are actually going to be a problem for telomerase. So, telomerase is actually going to fill these gaps. Now, what is the end, re end replication problem? So, linear genome including those of the several viruses as well as the chromosome of eukaryotic cell force a special problem completion of replication of the lagging strand. Excision of the RNA primer from the 5 prime end of the linear molecule would leave a gap known as the primer gap, right? And this primer gap cannot be filled by the action of DNA polymerase because of the absence of the primer terminus to the extent. And if the DNA does not get replicated, the chromosome would shorten a bit with each round of replication. And this problem has been solved by an enzyme which is called as the telomerases. So, telomerases, telomerases also known as the RNA dependent DNA polymerase right and it is a uh, ribonucleotide containing the RNA component having repeat of 9 to 30 nucleotide long. This RNA component serves as a template for the synthesis of the telomeric repeat at the parental DNA ends. So, telomerases uses at the 3 prime end of the parental DNA strand as a primer and its template self DNA component. So, it is going to use the self DNA component as a template and it has a 5 prime to 3 prime RNA dependent DNA polymerase activity due to which it adds the successive telomeric repeats to the parental DNA strand at its 3 prime end. This means the enzyme itself is going to have the RNA component uh, and that RNA component is actually going to serve as a template and that is how it is actually going to synthesize 
the DNA complementary to that particular sequence and is going to add that repeat on multiple occasions and that is how it is actually going to fill uh, the last gap of that particular DNA. So, regeneration of the telomerases, telomeric DNA consists of the simple tandem repeat sequence at the 5 prime end which are in the human for example, you have the A G G G T T, in higher plants you have the A G G T T T T, algae you have the A G G G T T T T T, protozoans you have the G G G G and T T T T and the yeast you are going to have the G G G and T. So, these are the repeat sequences what are being present uh, into the uh, telomeric uh, the uh, viral, uh, telomeric regions and uh, the telomerase is going to add these repeats on multiple occasions. Telomerase uses its RNA component as a template and parental DNA as a primer and then by its RNA dependent DNA polymerase activity it repeatedly add the telomeric sequences to the 3 prime end of the parental DNA and then it is released. At last the RNA primers of telomerase is bound near the leading lagging strand and it is extended by the DNA polymerase. Thus the lagging strand synthesis is completed. So, this is what exactly what is going to happen right. So, for example, you once you have the this kind of situation where this portion is actually going to be uh, uh, need to be synthesized right. So, telomerase is actually going to bind to the 3 prime end of the telomer and that is complementary to the telomeric RNA and that is how it is actually going to extend. So, bases are added using RNA as a template. So, it is going to have the this particular type of RNA what is been already been present inside the telomerase and it is going to synthesize this. So, it is that is how it is actually going to synthesize this sequence and uh, you remember this is actually having a u. So, in, uh, instead of u you are going to have the a and that is how it is actually going to be keep synthesizing this and utilizing this DNA polymerase will actually going to bind the complementary DNA lagging strand and it is actually going to synthesize this strand and that is how you are going to have the completion of the synthesis of the telomerases. Uh, Elizabeth Blackburn and her colleague have provided the answer to fill up the gaps with the help of the telomerases known as the modified reverse transcriptase or telomer transferase so that the genes are end are conserved. In human the RNA template consists of AAU CCC repeats. Examples of repetitive sequence which varies among species for example, tetrahyna uh, is going to have the AA triple C and oxidica you are going to have the AAA triple C. Uh, now, this is the me mechanism through which uh, sorry. Uh, so, this is the mechanism through which the telomerase is going to fill the gaps. You are going to have 3 prime end of the lagging strand base pair with the unique region of the telomerase associated RNA. The telomerase uh, catalytic side add the deoxynucleotide using the RNA molecule as a template and the telomerase then translocate to the new 3 prime end by pairing with the RNA template and it continue with the reverse transcription. DNA polymerase uses the newly made primer for the synthesis of DNA to fill the remaining gap. The primer is removed and nick between the fragment is sealed by the DNA ligase. So, this is uh, all about the uh, DNA replications uh, in the prokaryotic and as well as the eukaryotic system. What we have discussed so far, we have discussed about the DNA replication in the eukaryotic system and how it is different from the prokaryotic system in terms of the machinery and in terms of the processivity and in terms of the processes. And you can you might have now realized that it is very 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 complicated in the eukaryotic system compared to the prokaryotic system. So, uh, with this I would like to conclude my lecture here in our subsequent lecture we are going to discuss some more aspects related to DNA applications. Thank you. Thank you.